one of the main components of our uh, the way we do business here in the city of Hagerstown is getting stakeholder feedback. So everybody should have received uh, an index card with a question on it. What do you believe is key for creating positive change in Hagerstown's future? Along with some information about Engage Hagerstown, which is an online portal for uh, portal for getting stakeholder feedback. So uh, again, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, I think it's section 304 of, uh, what is it? Article three of the city charter requires that the mayor uh, present a uh, report on the condition of municipal affairs and to make uh, recommendations to the council. So that's what we're here for tonight. Uh, we are very grateful for the many partnerships that we have throughout the city in our community. Uh, and it's only appropriate that we highlight those at the beginning of this presentation. And for that, we will roll the videotape. Change is being seen felt and it's growing across the city of Hagerstown. In 2014, we hosted community conversations, getting our residents and stakeholders more involved in our future. We saw old buildings take on new purpose and we joined a grassroots effort to bring back the heart of Hagerstown. These are changes we embrace. They're changes we can take to new heights with even more collective support from the community. Here's a look at how the city led and supported positive progressive change in our community throughout 2014. We're making a coordinated collaborative effort to invigorate development in our city center. It's called the community's city center plan because of the significant role the community played in its creation. 130 hours were spent gathering input and ideas through personal interviews, group discussions, online feedback, and a community-wide meeting at the library. Urban Partners, an economics and planning firm, participated in those discussions and used the input to draft a 10-year roadmap for the city center development through eight catalyst projects. The plan calls for $125 million in new investment, with the private sector providing 75% of the funding the remaining 25% would come from all levels of government. The plan builds synergy among other ongoing catalytic projects in the community and among partner organizations in our downtown neighborhood. Progress is already underway and we're keeping you informed with quarterly action updates. Look for one of the first projects to be complete later this year as we link the Arts and Entertainment District to City Park with a trail that will help spur economic development opportunities and create a new neighborhood. We're also building partnerships to provide high-speed broadband services in city center. The city accepted proposals through a request for information to gauge interest in a municipal broadband project. The project would support affordable broadband at speeds of one gigabit or more in our downtown and serve a wireless parks initiative. High-speed broadband access downtown would greatly benefit DaVinci Interactive and our 17 employees, uh, whether it's deploying a new web application um, or downloading large video files from our parent company in Harrisburg, uh, it would streamline our business processes. Hagerstown is fortunate to have so many businesses, organizations, and volunteers who are dedicated to supporting our downtown. Those stakeholders will now be working cooperatively under the Main Street banner. Hagerstown is a Main Street, Maryland community, the first in Washington County. The proven Main Street model will enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of our collective efforts. You're invited to join us for the official launch in April. The pop-up shops gave the community a chance to rediscover downtown Hagerstown. The weekend-long shopping events were organized by the Downtown Movement, a group of volunteers seeking to bring back the heart of Hagerstown. City staff worked alongside the movement, coordinating with landlords to use empty space, providing code flexibility for the shops, and hosting a pop-up headquarters location. Honestly, we couldn't have done it without the city, from helping connect with the landlords down to getting permits to, you know, we have com um, city officials that come to our meetings and have helped the entire, the entire way. I think one of my favorite things is I feel like we've been on the same page with so many things, like we've had the same ideas at the same time, and I think that's been really, really cool. After the success of the summer and holiday events, some businesses have decided to go from pop-up to permanent. The city is building partnerships with developers through the First Third Grant, 
In 2014, the Grand Building at 20 West Washington Street saw major changes through renovations totaling over $750,000. The city provided the first third of the funding, $250,000. The developer, Michael Fitzgerald, also participated with the Partners in Economic Progress Incentives. He was able to attract tenants with the rent assistance component of the program, and the building is almost fully occupied. Economic development and the city manager and everybody within the economic side has been extremely great to work with. They've made everything easy for me. They've been there to help when I've had issues come up, and I sincerely appreciate everything they've done for me. Hagerstown is becoming home to a growing community of artists. Four artists are now living and creating in loft apartments at the studio on NOPO. They'll showcase their work and provide staffing for a gallery in their first floor storefront space. City, through the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts Foundation, provided a grant for $50,000 to develop the gallery, and employees gave their time to paint. City is promoting expanded opportunities for education in our downtown. As part of the community's city center plan, the city aims to support the growth of the University System of Maryland at Hagerstown from 500 to 750 students as they grow and develop new programs. The city and USMH are working cooperatively to capture student housing opportunities in downtown and have received proposals from interested developers and property owners. As we were created downtown, all of our efforts have been focused on how we can be a contributing neighbor, a good neighbor in the community. And I think our student body is one source of, of that growth in what we can do. Vacant properties have been acquired by the city and repositioned to have a more positive impact on our city center. The former CVS building is being transformed into a business resource center and the city demolished the rear of 4353 West Washington Street to make the property more appealing to developers. Through the competitive negotiated sale process, the city can ensure properties are returned to the private sector for the highest and best use. Look for more improvements to get underway at 170 West Washington Street, plus 19 to 23 West Antietam Street was recently sold with the developer's commitment to demolish the structure. In the West End, Broad Fording Road was widened to four lanes, making development around the shopping center more viable and attractive. The reconstruction was funded by Washington County government and private developers. In 2014, the city celebrated with 19 businesses on the occasion of their grand opening and anniversary milestones. Council approved new measures to protect and support our neighborhoods, upholding the city's vision and commitment to housing and neighborhoods. Our codes and regulations are our community standards, and it's through these tools that we protect the investments of our residents and raise the quality of life in our neighborhoods. All of these measures support the community's city center plan, which aims to expand home ownership opportunities in Hagerstown. Police are addressing safety from a neighborhood perspective. Officers are assigned a neighborhood. They engage with the residents to get an idea of what they experience. In turn, those interactions help resolve real issues that contribute to a fear of crime. Having a good relationship with law enforcement gives the community a confidence that they are protected, that uh, safety can be maintained, and it also helps that the people as a resource take responsibility in their neighborhood sends a signal out to those who may not want the best for our community to know that we do work together, all of us, along with the city officials and law enforcement to uh, maintain public safety. Healthy neighborhoods make up a healthy community, and neighbors are working together to make a difference on and around their block. New groups are forming under the Neighborhoods First program, and residents are organizing their own events to feature why they love city life. We're keeping our city streets and sidewalks accessible. Engineering staff assessed handicap accessible ramps in our alleys and public streets. With the help of community development block grants, 
85 ADA compliant ramps were installed across the community. Public Works staff is taking a closer look at sidewalks too to see where street tree roots have caused damage making the necessary repairs. We're sprucing up our gateways, enhancing first impressions of our city. The Department of Community and Economic Development adopted the East Franklin Street neighborhood, our city center gateway from the east. Staff is undertaking cleanups and beautification projects with residents, churches, and businesses. In the West End, park staff constructed a welcome sign at a substantial cost savings. Community engagement is taking off in new ways through online initiatives and interactive discussions. We're starting community conversations, sharing information, and gathering broad feedback to incorporate in our planning processes. Take a look at the Engage Hagerstown website, where over 400 people are connecting and collaborating with each other, sharing their thoughts and ideas on a variety of topics, and making concepts a reality. As the community's city center plan takes shape, we're asking more people to weigh in with their ideas. Community members walk the proposed path of the trail linking City Park with the Arts and Entertainment District. Then they met afterwards to brainstorm and discuss options for features along the trail. The landscape architect behind the project is hitting the drawing board with lots of ideas, in addition to those provided on the Engage Hagerstown website. We're using technology to provide more convenient access to information. Now on the city's website, you'll find a resident X311 feature. Users are one click away from the most important information they're searching for. Plus, community members can use online reporting features. You can file a police report, report a concern about a property, and let the city know about power outages, potholes, and street signs or street trees that need maintained. The X311 feature is also available by phone. Just dial the main city phone number and enter 311. Callers are directed to a one-touch menu, which will put them in touch with a city staff member that can provide assistance. The city's bond rating was upgraded from AA- to AA stable. Standard and Poor's cited Hagerstown's strong financial management practices, budgetary flexibility, and strong liquidity. To more responsibly oversee how the city incurs and pays off debt, Finance staff revised the debt management policy. The Municipal Electric Light Plant, MELP, is being demolished. The city negotiated a release and settlement agreement with the current owners. The remediation costs associated with the demolition are included in the agreed price, and the city expects the transfer to be complete in July. The Mayor and Council will be seeking input from the community about future uses for the property to support the East End. The Hagerstown Police Department is taking innovative approaches to preventing crime. Through predictive policing, officers are able to patrol target watch boxes. These are areas where crimes are more likely to occur based on statistical analysis. 
Right now, police staffing is at an all-time high. 16 new officers graduated from the HCC Police Academy. The downtown squad is at its highest staffing levels with eight patrol officers. They're supplemented with a school resource officer at the Barber Ingram School, a speed camera operator, a lieutenant, and auxiliary police. In partnership with Washington County Public Schools, there are now six school resource officers assigned to various schools throughout the city. When the program was established in 2002, there were only two officers in the program. The officers help with safety and security, but they also build relationships with students and staff. The Hagerstown Fire Department was able to add a substantial piece of apparatus to its fleet without incurring a significant cost. The department was in need of a reserve ladder truck. A used truck was purchased, and the price tag was about 5% of the total cost for a new model. The department has ordered a new ladder truck to replace Truck 1 at Pioneer Hook and Ladder. The apparatus will be built over the next year. The City of Hagerstown now manages 19 parks across the community. In 2014, the City accepted the transfer of Terrapin Park to the Collegiate Acres neighborhood. This park will feature playground equipment and, of course, turtles for climbing. We've been awarded grants which secure the full funding of all three phases of construction at Kiwanis Park. The park will be complete in 2015 and users will enjoy access to the Antietam Creek. Memorial Park, located at the corner of South Potomac Street and Memorial Boulevard, continues to take shape. The Pathway to Character was installed to promote the Pillars of the Character Counts program. A feature fountain was added and decorative markers line the walking trails to tell the story of Hagerstown's history. Notable Hagerstonians will soon be recognized as the first inductees in the Circle of Achievement. Just down from Memorial Park, Hagerstown residents are going to get growing in a new community garden. A group of interested citizens formed a task force with recommendations for a garden. Residents are able to rent their own plots to grow fresh herbs, produce, and flowers. The gardens will be ready for the spring planting season. Hagerstown is now officially a bicycle-friendly community. The city received the recognition at the bronze level by the National League of Cyclists. The league recognized our community's efforts in bicycle safety education, adding and improving bike lanes, and promoting bicycling events. We made more bicycle-friendly enhancements with grant funding. More people are hitting the ice at the Hagerstown Ice and Sports Complex. The facility is now managed by the Hagerstown Ice Amateur Athletic Association to represent all user groups of the rink. The group worked with the city to identify opportunities to enhance the facility, and they celebrated their grand reopening this winter. Check out these other changes in our parks and recreation programs. Parks and Engineering staff is currently addressing the impact of the Emerald Ash Borer. This little insect has the potential to destroy a considerable number of public trees along city streets and in our parks. Staff is identifying the trees for treatment, planting replacement trees, and removing trees that can't be treated. The city's goal is to pursue the most cost-effective solution that will maximize tree preservation. The city held its first electronics recycling event with a tremendous turnout. Residents contributed enough electronics to fill five tractor trailers. The event was free thanks to grant funds from the Maryland Department of the Environment. We marked a milestone anniversary with the Hagerstown Municipal Band, celebrating a century of quality music in the community. The musicians also recognized Lynn LaRue for his 40 years of leadership, making him the longest serving director. The city has sponsored the band since it formed in 1915. 
The Maryland State Arts Council recognized Hagerstown with the Outstanding Arts and Entertainment District Award for 2014. The distinction is awarded to one community each year, and the members of the A&E Management Board graciously accepted the honor. The arts community worked cooperatively with the city to bring public art to City Park. The sculpture is called The Fishing Lesson, depicting a mother bear showing her cub how to catch its own food. The bronze artwork comes to life through a storybook which was written by an HCC professor. The project was supported by the partners who developed the concept, private donors, and public grant funds. The city will be exploring opportunities to bring more public art to Hagerstown in the future. George Bernard Shaw said, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. It's time to change the way you think about Hagerstown, the perspective from which you view our community. In order to succeed, we have to work for this change together. Whether your actions are as simple as picking up trash on the sidewalk or as significant as moving your business downtown, we all have a role to play. We are worth the change we want to see in our community. We are worth the risk. We are worth the investment. We are worth the effort it will take to continue to change Hagerstown. So let's set our sights on our future and be responsible for the change we create in our city. I definitely want to recognize staff, especially Aaron uh, Wolf and Eric Hastings, who helped put that uh, production together. They do an outstanding job all the time. Uh, and I also want to thank all of the city staff who are here with us tonight. Uh, I won't name everybody for fear that I might miss somebody, but uh, we definitely have a very dedicated uh, professional staff, talented group of people who dedicate themselves to helping uh, the residents and citizens of Hagerstown all the time. Uh, and as I did this morning, I want to give a special shout out to Bruce Zimmerman, our city administrator. Uh, this will be his last state of the city with us, uh, but he's been with the city of Hagerstown now for over 20 years. Uh, again, a very professional, talented man of integrity, humble, uh, not a show showman or anything like that. He's just as happy to uh, uh, be a, a quiet force on the sidelines, but uh, has really been an integral part of all of Hagerstown's successes for the last two decades. So please give it up for Bruce Zimmerman. <clears throat> so indeed, things are changing. Uh, I really believe that I was elected to be a change agent, and I think that that's what uh, we have been trying to do uh, along with my council members uh, to really make things happen here in Hagerstown. And if you are out and about, if you've been to a, a pop-up shop event, uh, you have sort of catch the buzz that's out there. You can feel the energy. Uh, the tone of some people has even changed. It's become more positive. Um, and I believe that uh, more folks are becoming involved and caring about the future of our city. Uh, and we have great leadership. People are starting to take up uh, their fair share of the, uh, of the work. I was thinking about it this morning of some kind of analogy to, to make, and I, I think of it like a, a puzzle. We're trying to put this piece of, uh, all the pieces of the puzzle together to revitalize downtown. And, uh, you know, the city can do so much to maybe put the corners of the puzzle in, to create the border, uh, and maybe even to fill in some of the uh, pieces in the middle. But I think what is happening now is people are starting to see what the big picture is, is going to look like in the future. And now they're starting to put their piece of the puzzle in to make that picture a reality. And uh, I want to thank all of our partners. I know some of you here tonight were featured in that video, so thank you for uh, your contributions, uh, not only to the city, but uh, to making our community a better place. So the city's changing the way we do business. We're trying to find ways to use our limited resources in creative and efficient ways. Uh, and we want everyone to be a part of the change. It's really about uh, recognizing that change is good and that we should be embracing it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it requires everybody to do their fair share, as I mentioned before. And that means buying local, shopping local, uh, supporting your neighbors, living in the community that's walkable. Um, uh, we also uh, have been very... Uh, uh, fastidious, if you will, about getting community engagement. 
uh, that's you've seen the Engage Hagerstown logo, uh, certainly with the uh, community city center plan and the amount of stakeholder feedback we got into that plan. Uh, I always like to say that I, as the mayor, do not have all the answers for how we can improve our community, but I certainly do believe in the resources we have in our community members. Uh, and I think the way we move forward is to make sure we harness uh, that energy and to consistently uh, work for that stakeholder feedback uh, to make the community a better place. So we've tried to work to change the conversation, uh, you know, and I'm not an economics expert, but I really believe that uh, part of economics is us speaking things into being. So the more we talk things up, uh, the better uh, they will become. So again, we have to look forward to the future. Uh, we know we have challenges. We continue to struggle with the concentration of poverty in the city of Hagerstown. Uh, there's a lot of policies uh, that go back to the middle of the 20th century that we're still dealing with today in terms of our uh, fiscal and economic situation. And we have to deal with those barriers. Uh, but one of those uh, issues is housing. So we have to take a look at how uh, we're addressing the needs of folks in the city of Hagerstown to really create more balance. Uh, the concentration of poverty isn't going to be solved by necessarily displacing poor people from uh, the center city, but we have to make it more attractive for those with disposable income. We've been talking about that since I was a senior in high school, uh, that since I can remember, uh, we've been talking about trying to bring people uh, with disposable income to live in our center city. Uh, so we're gonna continue to work on that. We have to continue to address the concentration of nonprofits and the services being offered in our city center and to look and ask ourselves the question, uh, at what point does helping hurt? Uh, and it's a question I know that's being taken up in different areas of the community, especially in the, uh, in the religious community and the faith community. Uh, so, you know, we have to, to really examine uh, the fact that we're becoming overwhelmed with these kinds of services in the city of Hagerstown, and we have to realize we can't take any more. We have to examine uh, those practices and engage our community partners in that conversation. So in order to change, we have to realize we have to work together as a community. Everyone has a role to play. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean... Uh, you have to own a business uh, or uh, live in the downtown, but certainly everyone has a role to play. And that's just by standing up for what is right, doing the right thing, uh, making decisions that are in the best interest of our community and making decisions that promote the sustainability of our city. Uh, and, and also to realize that we're worth it. I think I, we said it in the video, we're worth the investment. Uh, we're worth the investment in ourselves and we're also worth other people coming in and investing in us. Uh, and we've got to keep uh, plugging away at forming public-private partnerships to make our goals happen. Uh, we have to encourage businesses, investors, and developers to be partners with the city. And again, uh, it really comes down to engaging members of the community. So that's what we're here for tonight. Uh, I am looking forward to hearing. I'm sure some of you have questions, so I'd be glad to take your questions and try to answer them as best I can. And I also want to remind you that you should have gotten an index card uh, with a question. Certainly, if you just want to use it for note-taking, that's fine too. But we really would like you to um, give us your feedback as to uh, what you believe is the key for creating positive change in the city of Hagerstown. So, any questions? None? Nancy. Uh, you know, what the city is actively doing to uh, promote a business, -friendly a business friendly atmosphere and to attract um, high paying jobs to our area? The question is how do we attract businesses? How do we make it business friendly? Um, I think the city offers uh, and continues to offer, has offered and continues to offer a number of incentives. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we could talk about what does it mean to be business friendly. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges, if we're talking about the downtown to business friendliness, is not necessarily the city, uh, but some of the properties that our, our entrepreneurs encounter. Uh, you know, when, when I look at a small business, an entrepreneur that has to spend their own risk capital on somebody else's crappy building, 
uh, then that, I think, is one of the biggest barriers to business development in the city of Hagerstown. Uh, I think it's uh, unfair to the, the entrepreneur, uh, and I think that, you know, as I said in the, in the presentation, you know, people can say, you know, it's codes and regulations that are keeping business away, but I truly believe, and I think uh, my council members would agree, that our codes, our regulations are our community standards. Uh, and we're not trying to lower the bar in our community, we're trying to raise the bar. Um, but I think that requires not only support and incentives from the city of Hagerstown, which we do have, but I think it also takes personal responsibility on the part of property owners to try to create the conditions that allow new businesses to come in. Uh, so I think that uh, that's where we're going. We, we do look and examine uh, our incentives uh, frequently, the city council, uh, created the first third grant program, which encourages people to make large investments in downtown properties. Uh, so I think we're trying to create the right amount of uh, carrots and sticks, so to speak. Uh, but I really think a lot of it boils down to personal responsibility on the part of property owners. Yes, sir. Is there a possibility that the Hagerstown Sun will come back, or is that a dead issue? Well, we know they'll be back for this season I mean after and for next season. After that is anyone's guess. We certainly hope that we will have a partner in the Hagerstown Suns when it comes to uh, a, a major renovation of Municipal Stadium. I think that's what we're looking at at this point. Uh, I think there is somewhat of a consensus on the city council as to uh, making that investment in the asset that we already have in Municipal Stadium. Uh, but, you know, my own personal feeling is that it is an asset that we should try to keep here in Hagerstown. Uh, it ha there is a direct impact on the local economy, I think, to the tune of two and a half million dollars uh, in just direct spending from the Hagerstown Suns. So it would be unfortunate to, to lose that asset. Uh, but we do have the infrastructure. We have a stadium. Uh, it's in need of major renovation. Uh, and I really believe that if we come up with a plan uh, with partners in local government and state government uh, that basically allows for the, a major renovation of municipal stadium, then I believe we will be able to attract, uh, whether it's the Hagerstown Suns or another team. Uh, but we have to make it simple enough so that it's, uh, we have a, a project and a plan for financing it uh, where there's just a bottom line where this is how much we need the private sector to contribute. Uh, and whether that's the Hagerstown Suns and their current ownership or a different ownership of the same team or a different team, I'm open to uh, any and all of those uh, partners to make it happen. So I'm hopeful. Yes, sir. The Suns are one of them, but also the Museum of Fine Arts, mm. an orchestra that, you know, cities the size of Hagerstown. World Island, class. Like that. It seems mm -hmm. to me we somehow need to enhance those things that we're doing well already mm -hmm. to, to build on those. Well, and you sort of touched on uh, a major point in our community city center plan, which is, you know, we have the Maryland Theater. Uh, it is a huge attraction. It brings thousands of people uh, to our city center. And so one of the things we're trying to do is expand event programming, not only at the Maryland Theater, but also in general in our downtown to attract more people to visit that resource. The trail that will connect the Arts and Entertainment District in downtown with the uh, city park is intended to really connect what is an Arts and Entertainment District in City Park with the Arts and Entertainment District in downtown. And in the process, uh, not just creating a trail, but hopefully transforming the entire neighborhood in between uh, to create new housing and new uh, mixed use opportunities in that, in that old industrial site. So I, I agree with you. We have a lot of jewels that are hidden that we would like to unhide and make sure everybody knows that they're there and we'll, uh, we'll visit them and enjoy them as much as we all do. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. on the city-owned parking lot. Correct. And a lot of people think that's crazy mm -hmm. because you've got 15 to 20 buildings down here mm -hmm. that you could remodel 
into modern office space mm -hmm. and you are not doing that, what are you doing with these 20 buildings downtown? Some of them are vacant, mm -hmm. some have the first floor filled, and some of these buildings have been here for 30 years empty. Mm -hmm. I go by Gibney's Flower Shop on Franklin Street, and in 1975, when I served on the Downtown Development Committee, that second floor was empty. It's still empty, and a lot of the buildings, they were empty then, and they're still empty. Mm -hmm. I would think when you're trying to redevelop, you need to focus on Center City. Mm -hmm. And when it's up and running, then you can build a trail to the city park and spend money. Why spend money on a trail when your main area is not up and running? And I think there should be a trail from the Arts Center to the park but there's going to be a lot of problems on the way. So why don't you concentrate on Center City? Well, I think your question was about the office building, so let me start with that. So one of the catalyst projects in our community city center plan is recommended that we use the property we already own and control, which is the central lot, uh, which at one point had a building there. I cannot remember in my lifetime when that building existed, but. Uh, currently, there is now a gap tooth on the block. If you go out of City Hall and turn left, uh, you'll pass the Thai Zap and uh, the Artist Lofts and the M&T Bank. And then that gap where the parking lot exists between uh, the bank and the Elizabeth Hager Center is a city-owned parking lot. Uh, so you mentioned 20 or 30 empty buildings, and I agree. It would be nice if those buildings were uh, reoccupied and, and repositioned. However, the city doesn't own and control all those properties. This is, goes back to the personal responsibility of every property owner uh, to, to create the highest and best use for their properties. So one of the ideas, and I might disagree with you that, uh, that a lot of these old buildings are in a position where they can be renovated into Class A office space. I think, uh, I think that will be very challenging in some cases, if not impossible, just based on the architecture uh, and the infrastructure of those, those particular buildings. Uh, but there is also the theory that if you build a brand new office building, Class A office space in the center city, uh, in the process of trying to market that space, uh, you may encounter uh, users who may not be able to afford or may not want that space, but in the process of looking around, they might say, oh, well, I really like this building over here, uh, and it, it actually increases the market for the Class B and Class C office spaces that may be available in some of these upper stories. So. So the idea is that by building or developing a, a partnership with a developer to build a building on the city's lot, uh, it wouldn't necessarily detract from further development of those existing buildings. In fact, the idea is that it might actually enhance the marketability of those properties. Um, so yes, I do agree that we've had, like you said, 70, 1975, I wasn't even born yet. Uh, but that's the... Uh, the nature of how entrenched some of these conditions are in our community. And I think that's why, you know, having a fresh vision, trying to create new developments, again, on property that the city already controls, uh, we're just trying to go for the low-hanging fruit in that sense uh, because we don't own and control. Now, we get criticized every time we acquire a property uh, just as much as we get criticized if we try to sell a property. So we're always in that catch-22, but I think... Uh, the properties that we have purchased, you, you saw a couple highlighted in the video, uh, the goal is to reposition them uh, to do remedial work if necessary, to do some demolition, uh, to put in new windows, new paint, uh, to get them in a place where a developer, an, an investor can come in and take it to the next level and, and make a higher and better use out of it. So that's our goal. Uh, the goal is not to take away from the potential redevelopment of older buildings. In fact, the, the idea is that it would enhance the marketability of those, those properties. Any other questions? Yes. So along with the discussion about enhancing property to um, entice 
developers or businesses to our area. Is there any discussion about the infrastructure that would support those types of businesses, especially in terms of technology? I know when I work remotely, um, high-speed internet is a very sore subject for me, and I've tried several different providers, of which I will name none, um, but I still come up short. Um, you know, I'm waiting and waiting. There's really only is data. one. So, um, <laughs> and, and also with the consideration that that may be a long-term goal, mm -hmm. are there any short-term um, objectives that we should yes. be discussing today to position us for that ultimate offer? Well, in fact, uh, we do have... Um, a few vendors actually responded, I think six, uh, possibly seven, to a request for uh, information. The city is actively trying to create a gigabit network uh, here in the center city. Of course, we can use the infrastructure we already have uh, with the Hagerstown Light Department uh, and partner. What we're looking to do is partner with a private entity to create that fiber network that will give you the high-speed internet because this I hear a lot of uh, people in your situation who uh, work from home they may have offices down the road in DC or, or Baltimore or even New York City uh, and people uh, in order to do their jobs and live here in Hagerstown need access to that high-speed uh, fiber internet uh, and you're right the local providers up to this point have not been willing to provide that kind of service uh, for whatever reasons. So we are actively, so stay tuned. I would say within the next few weeks, we'll have some more information on the next steps uh, in that regard. It's very, we recognize that that is a huge uh, boon to our local economy if we can make that happen because uh, not too many communities, I, I think Westminster is on the way right now, but I can't think of many other communities in the state of Maryland or even in the region that have that kind of capability for high-speed broadband internet. So we're excited about that opportunity. Any other questions? Yes, sir. We used to have uh, artists, regional artists, perform at the University of Florida mm -hmm. a few years ago. We kind of stopped that. I would like to see us have local talent, free local talent, jazz bands, even gospel choirs, other talents that we have in the community perform there on a weekly basis in the summer and spring. Of course, they would be free. And we're paying other people from the region that really didn't have a big following. When we have the jazz bands from the schools or different people from the community, you know, they bring out the grandmothers, the cousins. Mm -hmm. We have more people coming downtown sure. with that. Because that's a nice facility over and it really sits empty 75% of the time. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And wasn't it nice in the video, I, I kept seeing those shots of green grass and all the trees, and it does make you long for spring, doesn't it? It's just nice to know that it's on the way. No, I agree, and one of the other uh, uh, things in our Catalyst projects is to bring more events to downtown, and whether that's free concerts at University Plaza with local artists, or the Wind Down Fridays uh, at the, uh, in front of the Maryland Theater on South Potomac Street, uh, any and all of those are good things, and I certainly I know our uh, community affairs manager Karen Giffen is here, and and hearing what you say, and uh, I know she's worked in the past to get a lot of those kinds of acts uh, in Hagerstown. So we'll we'll definitely be keeping that in mind. Yes, sir. Are the bicycle routes being are are the bicycle routes? being used by bikers. I don't see anybody. Yes. I know that I'm using them. I get out on my bike. I know uh, Council Member Metzner does as well. Uh, yes, I do believe. I mean, I, don't, I don't, couldn't say that they're the most utilized we'd want them to be. We'd certainly love for more people to get on their bikes and leave their cars behind. Uh, but I think our investment in that infrastructure, which doesn't really cost a whole lot of money, is really worthwhile. It's put us on the map with the American Bicyclists Association. We just got a, an award for being a bicycle-friendly community. Uh, and I think that's something that really does put us on the map and helps us get the kinds of people that we want to live here in the city of Hagerstown and makes us a more sustainable community. But yeah, I do think they're, obviously when they're covered in snow and ice, it's a little harder for the bikes to use them. But uh, yes, I do believe they're being used. Any other questions? Yes.
city has any jurisdiction in order, you know, towards those landlords? Like, is there anything that the city can do to nudge them to make them more marketable? Absolutely. Well, of course, we have code enforcement, and any time we know that there are code violations, we will we will do our best to get those remedied. I mean, obviously, the idea is not to shut these places down, but to get them up to code and hopefully get them occupied. So, uh, depending on what building you're talking about, uh, I'm sure our staff could give you a litany of actions that they've taken uh, in the last six months, year, or in some cases over the many years to try to address the blighting influence that some of these properties have. Uh, and we've tried to do uh, regulatory fixes to try to strengthen those codes, to give uh, staff uh, a little more authority to try to make some change happen. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but in many cases, uh, it takes personal responsibility on the part of these, uh, these property owners to turn things around. And it is unfortunate that some people bought a lot of property right before the economy tanked, and they just found themselves without the capital they need to invest in those properties. Um, but it doesn't excuse the kinds of conditions that we see in some of these properties around the city. So again, it's, it's trying to balance the use of carrots and sticks. Uh, I, I certainly think we have plenty of uh, incentives to help property owners and, and business folks. Uh, but on the other hand, we do have to have regulatory uh, schemes to try to as you say, nudge them in the right direction. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, what about the small little buildings? I mean, you've mm -hmm. got the facade restoration program, mm -hmm. but it's only good for, I think, five or six different blocks in Hagerstown, mm -hmm. the rest of the city. I mean, what are the incentives for the, if somebody owns a house, they don't make a whole lot of money, but they mm -hmm. own their house, it needs to have the front of it painted or new windows mm -hmm. or whatever. What incentives do they have? Well, we do have, I believe, some low or no interest loans that the city can provide to homeowners for basic maintenance, like uh, roof repairs and things like that. So we do try to work those in. I think uh, a lot of people don't know about them, uh, but I would encourage you, if you do have any questions, we do have staff uh, that are always available to, to address those concerns. Um, in terms of commercial or businesses, there's always the, uh, the PEP, the Pro uh, Partners in Economic Progress, which is basically a rental subsidy to help occupy some of those upper floors. Um, but I think between, uh, there's home ownership incentives where you can get down payment assistance uh, if you buy a house within a certain area in the city of Hagerstown. So if you have any ideas along those lines, we'd love to hear them. Uh, but I think in terms of incentives, we want to do as much as possible uh, to get the right kinds of folks making the right kinds of investments in the right places. I'm, uh, my business is located on uh, second floor for the last six years, and I've tried to apply for PEP. Um, for some reason, where I'm located, it's not meeting the requirements, but yet it must be meeting the code in order for the building to be st to be open. So what what qualify? What makes that difference for a second floor? If you're in there and you're operating, so you have to be meeting code. Mm -hmm. But why does it not qualify for PEP? I do not know the answer to that question. I will admit, but I can certainly get more information or connect you to staff to help get you the information you need about that. Said, you've been on the council for four or five terms. Well, back some years ago, Merle Elliott put together a committee and money, and they bought land around the county so that when somebody came in um, or when they had a project, the county would buy this land from this committee. Why hasn't or wasn't a committee set up for the downtown like that so that when these properties came on the market, they could buy these properties for the city and then the city could work to get someone to remodel them. I mean, it might be too late now because a lot of people have gotten very good deals when the economy went down, but I was wondering why something wasn't done then. You, 
<clears throat> you'd be referring to chief, um, which uh, needs <clears throat> more explanations than I can give you, but chief is not a government-funded entity. Um, and I am not exactly positive. Do you know, Marty, how Chief is funded or how it was funded in the I beginning? Don't know, it was, you know, before my time. Yeah. But it's not a government it, it, uh, We would love to have such an entity. Chief is um, now basically taking all their money out to mount it in the farms. Uh, we have used Chief in the past in Hagerstown. So that that entity is not limited to the county. The problem with that entity, and any entity that you would create, is they're for profit. Um, they're not buying properties and then giving them to anybody. They're buying properties and then selling them. Uh, Chief was integral in the closing of the Double T and, and other things with the property next to the Maryland Theater. Uh, they have come in and been very active in Hagerstown, but the problem is they don't buy properties and give them away. They buy properties, uh, they're sort of a pass-through agency, so to speak. So it, it's not the chief is for the county and not for the city. It's, it's for both the county and the city, but it is nothing essentially but a pass-through mechanism, and we have used them frequently in the past. Any other questions? That might help to um, answer some of these statements that we've had uh, made vocal tonight. I'd like to offer a suggestion. You're talking about some of the blighted properties that need to have uh, maintenance that the property owners can't afford or are unwilling to do the uh, repairs. I might suggest that the city offer some type of incentive program to encourage those landlords and those property owners to maintain those properties. And it isn't always that people don't want to. They are very costly to maintain because a lot of these buildings that we have throughout the city are old and they require perpetual maintenance of painting and upkeep just because of the nature of the, of the materials that they were built with. And I know in other cities they've been very proactive in trying to incentivize homeowners to help them, to aid them in the repairs of their properties. They've offered some, uh, networks and putting people together, contractors together to help them with, with doing some of that deferred maintenance. And I might also suggest that when the city is uh, sending out the letters from code enforcement about um, things that need to be repaired, they might also include a packet that deals with some of those incentive programs to help them, like you had alluded to. Mm -hmm. Just try to, you know, help them to make those repairs, because we all suffer. And when we look at the properties coming in on uh, West Franklin, you know, I personally have been trying to help um, a business owner locate downtown, and one of the problems that we've encountered is everywhere we go, we look around and we're seeing a blighted area. And the question comes up, is this a safe location for me to locate? And I'm going to be dealing with small children and so forth. And they, public safety is definitely on the top of everybody's list. And I know that we have uh, had programs in the past to address that. I'd also suggest, as someone mentioned up here about the PEP program, that we would, in, we would expand all programs to be anywhere within the city limits because it seems to me that if you encourage people to come within the city limits, that, that disposable income is going to spill out into the downtown. And the more that we can do to attract people to become homeowners throughout the city, not just in certain areas, but also with the, uh, the, sitter, the city residency program as well where you want to have uh, police officers and cadets residing in properties. We have crime all through the city, and I don't think it's specific to any certain area downtown. It needs to be made available throughout. We did expand our city uh, residency initiative to police officers to be citywide. We did expand. So that, that. has mm -hmm. been expanded to be citywide. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And I appreciate, you know, you, men you mentioned the connection between blight 
and this perception of safety. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some real safety issues when it comes to blighted buildings. I mean, if we have to send first responders into these Absolutely. Uh, buildings, there's there's their safety we have to be conscious of. Yes. Uh, but there is also that perception that if you're in a blighted area, it just feels unsafe, even though the crime statistics may not show that. It does present that feeling, which is, again, why it's so important to address those blighting conditions. And And I do appreciate your suggestions. Can I mention one other thing? Mm -hmm. I know that uh, through the city um, rental code registration program, we have access to knowing who those landlords are. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that when you have a situation where there's uh, a criminal activity going on that you notify that landlord whether Mm -hmm. it may not even just be a criminal activity but it might be a call by the police uh, or to or by the fire company Mm -hmm. are the landlords notified when that happens I know in other cities that's what they use that Mm -hmm. that registration for as a database it's indeed what we use that for if so uh, we call them qualifying calls so if if it's a I'm not just talking about qualifying calls I'm talking about anytime there's something that happens at that property notifying that property owner to let them know that this is pretty much is everything except for domestic violence we're not going to be reporting that to the landlord Uh, but uh, for any of those other violations that is that was one of the big uh, points of the rental license program was that uh, in the crime free ordinance that we that we passed was that when there is criminal activity going on in rental units we want to notify those property owners so the first time uh, it happens they get notified, uh, and they, they're sort of like a warning because after the second time, uh, then they start to incur some penalties as a landlord for not keeping a crime-free housing program. I understand that, but I don't think that that is actually happening across the board. Well, I'll check into that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the mention of PEP, make sure that's understood that, from my understanding, that's for businesses, not for homeowners. Mm-hmm. Am I correct? Correct. Yes, for businesses. Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure that was everyone understood that. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? If you're too shy, I'll stick around. You can always uh, come up after, after we're done here. Anyone else? Well, thanks again for coming out tonight. It really is important to us for you to stay engaged and uh, let us know how we're doing. So thanks again. Appreciate you being here. And don't forget, thank you. Don't forget to drop your cards off in the basket up here.